The MacGuffin is the thing that the spies are after, but the audience don't care. Alfred Hitchcock. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. It is time to make fun of Lee for her favorite tropes. Yes, yes. The action, suspense, thriller novels. The trope that is most common throughout my genre is probably the MacGuffin. Yes, definitely the MacGuffin. So what is a MacGuffin? Like the opener said, it's a thing that everybody is after that doesn't matter to the story at all. It could be replaced by a chocolate chip cookie and it makes no difference in the story whatsoever. So it is a noun, it is a thing, it's not a character. Most of our tropes so far have been either a type of twist or a character, or have to do with characters. It's a a noun, a thing, that everybody's after. One of the most famous examples of this going back to film noir 40s era is the Maltese Falcon. Of all the things that I've heard be called a MacGuffin, it's always the Maltese Falcon. Yes, MacGuffins existed even before they were named. They've existed basically throughout all of storytelling. But Hitchcock is the one who named them. So if you're looking up MacGuffins from before Hitchcock's time, it won't be called that. I don't know what it will be called, but not that. It may be applied post-Hitchcock era to pre-Hitchcock era stuff, but it wasn't called that until him. To kind of go to the history of the word MacGuffin... It was originally a device used to trap lions in the Scottish Highlands. And that literally means something that's utterly useless. There are no lions in the Scottish Highlands. So it's just a thing. You often see this in action movies. They're fighting over the suitcase or they're fighting over a flash drive or this or that. We don't know what's in the suitcase. We don't know what's on the flash drive. We don't care. We just want to see them beat each other up and blow stuff up. So besides the Maltese Falcon, what other MacGuffins come to mind? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is <laughs> an amazing MacGuffin because they never find it. And it doesn't matter because the quest is the important part, is the journey. If you've watched Citizen Kane, there's the question of Rosebud. What is Rosebud? And it spins this whole story around something that ends up being a toy from his childhood. It ends up being nothing, but we're still entertained by this story, regardless of the fact that that's completely irrelevant to the plot. Another example is the Heart of the Ocean necklace in Titanic, where it's used to introduce the story and then kind of teased throughout the story, but really has no relevance to the plot other than a way to introduce it. She throws it in the ocean at the end. Yeah, pointless. One of the great uses I've seen of a MacGuffin is in the movie Night and Day. That's with a K, Night. And it was, I believe it was a Tom Cruise movie, making fun of action movies. The whole thing is as cliche as possible across the board. And they use a perfect MacGuffin in it. And it's this battery that's supposed to help save the world and revolutionize power and blah, blah, blah. And they're carrying this thing around from place to place to place, and the bad guys are after them. All it is is an excuse for the bad guys to be after them. But because it's a satire, it's a beautiful use of the MacGuffin. There are a lot of other tropes in there, too, if you want to have some homework, have fun. And that's the thing with MacGuffins. When used intentionally and with very specific purposes, they are useful. But if you try to use a MacGuffin, it doesn't always work right. It does kind of have to be satire, I think, because if you're using MacGuffin with purpose, I don't know if it qualifies as a MacGuffin anymore, because the whole point is it's pointless. Well, this would be kind of in the case of the Heart of Gold Necklace. It is a decent way to introduce a plot, maybe not the best, but it's a tie-in. It's a way to get there. But you really have to be cautious with MacGuffins. Because even if they're there, even if they're used with the purpose and not always satirical, it doesn't always work. A lot of the time, it'll feel more like a Chekhov's gun. Most of our goal for the Tropes series is to make you as storytellers aware of these tropes. Most people, when they have a MacGuffin, 
don't realize that it's a MacGuffin. It's a completely useless object that the whole thing is coming down to. If you're aware of it and you choose to use it anyway, great. Our mission is accomplished. You do you. You tell your story how you want to tell it. But if you aren't aware that there is a MacGuffin in this story, then it can get really annoying for your audience members. And that's what I mean by using it with purpose. You have to know that it exists in order to use it. So sometimes the MacGuffin is not a noun. It's not a, an actual object. It can be other things that the characters are going through that just feel like they're thrown in there because the writers needed to do something and less about the actual story. So one of the subtropes is going to see the elephant, which is literally going on a trip and we don't have a reason for the trip. They're just kind of going and we don't understand the purpose of the story. Another common thing is that it's just an explanation for something because magic. And that's a little bit annoying to the reader, especially coming from a fantasy writer and reader. I like my magic to make sense and have a purpose. I don't want it to be a, well, it's that way because magic. Joss Whedon, who is known for a lot of his sci-fi and little on the edge between reality and fiction, explained a MacGuffin as a shortcut in lieu of a scientific explanation. Because we now have a flux capacitor, therefore we can travel through time, jazz hands, deal with it. So how do I tell if I have a MacGuffin in my story? You have to consider your audience at this point. What is it that your characters care about, but as a reader, you wouldn't care about? If it meets that criteria that you don't care, but your characters do, it's a MacGuffin. Another thing to keep an eye out for, does it change the characters in some way? Are they going on this road trip because at the end of the road trip, one of the characters is having a kid? Is there something that's affecting and changing the personality of the characters? Something that's driving and motivating them beyond go? Wonderlust is not a good explanation. If it has a purpose in changing and influencing the characters, it's not a MacGuffin. But if it is only used to trigger the plot and get them started, but not really do anything at the end of the story, it's a MacGuffin. And most obvious is if I change out whatever the object that this combat is surrounding, if I change it out with a chocolate chip cookie, does the plot still make sense? If so, then it's probably a MacGuffin and make it a chocolate chip cookie because I'd be very fascinated to read that story. Yes. If a chocolate chip cookie could change the fate of the world, then I think we're set. Yes. <laughs> I'll read that one. But it's still a MacGuffin. So how do I fix it? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest way to fix a MacGuffin is to make it relevant, make it matter. Give it an importance to the plot and the story beyond starting it or just being there for a reason. And then that will matter to the audience. We will be talking next month about the hero's journey and how there's an internal and an external part to the story. If there is no internal connection to this object that the combat's surrounding, it's a MacGuffin. And if you give it a sentimental value of some kind, this battery, my dad died to design it. Okay, now we've got an emotional investment to the thing. Another way to do it is make it absolutely irreplaceable. That nothing can take its place and still have the same effect. Literally, what that's doing is taking it out of the definition of a MacGuffin. If it's replaceable, then it's a MacGuffin. If it's irreplaceable, then it becomes plot relevant. And MacGuffins aren't just for books and for stories. There are MacGuffins all over the place in video games. Yes. These are often in the form of what we call a plot coupon where you have to save the farmer before you can go to this other city. There's no actual reason to beyond there's a wall there, and if you don't save the farmer, then the wall doesn't go away. 
I get the XP that I need to level up and move on and keep going. So that's a plot coupon MacGuffin. There's also another fun subcategory of a MacGuffin. It is called a mock guffin. <laughs> yes, this is one where this thing that everybody is after is just utterly useless in the end. We finally get to see what's inside the suitcase and it's just shredded paper. There's no actual money there. It's a kind of a plot twist. So after we've blown up three Sears Towers and destroyed seven helicopters and 14 windmills and blah, 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 we finally have our hands on the USB drive. Plug it in. It's a Trojan virus that just wipes out the computer and that's it. This is a fun one that happens a lot in real life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a new story once. A police department was called about a suspicious package that had been received after a bomb threat. They go, they call out the cavalry, they have their little bomb squad robot, and they have everybody's like SWAT set up, and they have their perimeter, and a ton of resources spent on this. They finally get to the box, they detonate it, and it was a box of KFC coupons. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that's a mock guffin because it's absolutely irrelevant, like even more irrelevant than an actual MacGuffin. So to kind of wrap up our MacGuffin discussion, not always bad, but you have to know what it is. Yes, recognize it in your own writing and then make the choice. Do we want to apply emotional significance to this? Do we want to make it unique to whatever's going on in the story? Or do you want to keep it a MacGuffin? I think with action novels, you kind of have permission to have a little bit of thin plot because the combat's cool. But one of the worst things that you can have is an accidental MacGuffin. Yes. So recognize it, but write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>